going to be very informal. Um, but then Heather asked a question that I actually had slides that I could answer it with. So, Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think it might have been your question about remixing. It was yeah. Lisa's question. Yeah. Licenses. So. Um, yeah. How do you get those attribution? Yeah, it's not even so different licenses necessarily. It's just different sources. So if I'm pulling from more than one source about whatever parts of the cell, how do I do the attributions for that? Okay. So uh, okay, so we're talking about remixing content from different yeah. sources or outside content with stuff that you wrote yourself. Yeah. Um, and so this is kind of like a different topic I'll just get to. So this is, um, Michelle Da Silva is um, on a Writing 227 team that's part of the 2015 grant cohort. Um, and she gave a great presentation on authoring and that webinar is archived on the Open Oregon um, website. Um, and so this is what her spreadsheet looks like. And um, I, I sent you all a link to the handout that goes with this presentation. So it's linked from there. But so she was, um, as she went along, as she was collecting her information, she created a spreadsheet that included the link, the license information, any notes, right? So you don't want to be the student that has like the night before the project is due um, bibliography crisis, right? <laughs> we all know that student, don't be that student, right? So she, this is what she did as she went along, and then this is um, what it looked like. She kind of did an end note at the end okay. of her chapter. Um, because, and what I was saying to Heather is you really want to think about the end user and that's the student, right? So you don't want it to be distracting. Footnotes or, you know, in-text attribution or whatever could become distracting to the reader and what you want to do is have them pay attention to your content and learn the material, right? So this is useful for a future instructor who may adopt or adapt, right? Um, and then I have some other examples. So this is um, from Bay College. Um, they remixed original content with open content. So this example is um, a photo by Pixabay. These are all public domain photos. Um, so no attribution is required, but they gave one. So it's circled here. And then the um, text is content by Denise Dufek, Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. I'm sorry, it's small, but that's what it says. So Denise Dufek is the author and instructor of this course. Um, so, so this is sort of a nice, very subtle, but good way to attribute. Uh -huh. okay. And then this is the Bay College um, American History textbook that they remixed original content with the American Yacht, which is um, a Creative Commons share-like open textbook. So um, this is a page that was from the American Yacht, and they've got content provided by the American Yacht. So they sort of did their attributions at the bottom of each section where it was relevant. So it's just another way to do it. There's no like official format. Hi, I'm Amy. Mary. Oh, Mary. Hi. Hey. Nice to meet you. We're talking about what do you, how do you do the attribution when you're remixing from multiple sources? Okay. Yeah. Um, but it would totally be okay to just say, here's all the sources that were used for this section at the end. Yeah, exactly. Because you want to, well, you want to provide attribution, so you want to make it clear who created what, right. and you also want to make it um, useful for a future instructor who might want to reuse your content. Um, and so, whatever way you find to convey that information, there's no requirement. Okay. And do you know about the Open Washington Attribution Builder? No. Ah, okay, let's do that one too. Builder, but for Creative Commons license stuff. You put in the title, the URL, the author, you say which kind of license it has, and then it gives you a little statement down here that you can copy and paste. Um, and I use it all the time. Like for example, um, this slide that we were looking at, um, this down here came from that open law attribution okay. builder. Because again, there's no official format for a Creative Commons attribution, but it's like, take the guesswork out of it. You know? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's another good tool to know about. Um, other, other things 
to know about attribution. Um, so this presentation goes a little bit into like remixing things with different kinds of licenses. Is that an issue for anybody? I'm sure it will be. It will be. Yeah. So seems like a thing. Yeah. You can use all your math problems because it's kind of fun. <laughs> so if you have CC BY and CC BY SURE alike, what license are you going to put on your content? Um, the sure, the most strict one, which mm -hmm. is the SURE alike one. Yeah, the most restrictive one. So this one says you just have to give attribution. This one says you have to give attribution and license it the same way. So you have to go with this one. Okay, how about this one? CC BY non-commercial SURE alike and CC BY non the top one? It's like the top one has more things. Yeah. <laughs> it's more things. Yeah. So they both say that. They both have that non-commercial <laughs> restriction, but then this has the additional restriction that you have to share it back out with this exact same license. Um, and there are non-compatible combinations. Um, and in my notes, I have some examples of what those are. Um, if you find something with no derivatives, you can't remix it with something else because you're not allowed to make a derivative version. So anything with an ND is incompatible. Um, there's a cool chart on the Creative Commons website that shows you like, you know, you've got all the licenses going this way and going this way and it shows you what is and isn't compatible. Um, another example would be like CC by share alike and CC by non-commercial share alike. Why would those be incompatible? Can you say it again, I'm sorry. Okay, CC by share alike, mm -hmm. and CC by non-commercial share alike. Is that what you just showed? Um, oh, it had something else. Because the non-commercial, something about the non-commercial. <laughs> no, it's actually the share alike <laughs> that's messing it up. <laughs> oh, it is? I know, yeah. Because oh, because you can't share alike because one's non-commercial and the other one's not. Right, there, so the CC by share like is saying share forward with this exact same license. CC by NC share like is saying share forward with this exact same oh, license. Oh, I see, I see. You can't do oh. both at the same time because they're different from each other. You just asked me to do math in my head. Amy. I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like it's after lunch it. and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, in that case, We're you can um, write to the rights holder and say, hey, will you change your license, please? or will you give permission for this other use of your content? They will often say yes, because they've got a Creative Commons license on there in the first place, so they're obviously interested in sharing in the first place. Um, you can ask a librarian to help you find something equivalent that does have a compatible license, or you can create your own and put a less restrictive license. And then, the, uh, I think this is, oh yeah, the moral of the story is to use the least restrictive license for downstream users to have an easier time. Um, but you know, when you think about you know, all, all these restrictions and stuff, I just want to show my very first slide because um, I borrowed my statement from Quill West, who's one of my um, OER heroes. She's a librarian at Pierce College. So it says this presentation by Amy Hopper for Open Oregon is licensed under a CC BY license. Some materials have more restrictive licenses. Please note those licenses when you use my presentation. So I'm just saying like, hey, if you're gonna use this, here's a caveat. And you know, I feel like future users are also gonna be OER nerds like myself who will notice and make sure that they have a good justification. Yeah. I'm actually just implementing um, an, an already OER, like it's all been figured out. And so I know that I came in late, so, and I apologize, no, but no. Um, I don't know actually a lot about licensing, oh. period. But at some point, yeah. I may want to be doing this. Yeah. So forgive Let's me. Let's go back to the okay. 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 So, so just briefly, yeah. I was just With like, an open license, you can okay. do the five R's. Like okay. David Riley calls the five R's. Revise, remix, reuse, redistribute, retain. So functionally, it means you can download and save a copy. You can share it back out without violating copyright. You can make changes if you want. Um, you can mash things together um, as long as you're providing attribution back to the original creator. Mm -hmm. You have permission in advance to do those things. And because we have experts in the room, someone else explain oh, what these yes. symbols mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> if 
it's the best way to learn is to have one teach it, right? Exactly. Yeah. We're flipping the classroom. Exactly. Right? The All first right. one means that you have to um, uh, note who the content is by. The second one means non-commercial, so you can't um, sell it for profit. However, it is sometimes possible to sell it just for the cost. Is that right? So, like, mm -hmm. if you create, you know, an OER sociology book, mm -hmm. and then it, whatever it costs to print that, you can sell it for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The bookstore can also do their regular markup. And that's okay. And that's not. They have that's to keep the lights on. To, yeah, they have to. Yeah, pay that's their staff. not profit. Yeah. That's not for profit. That's again, yeah, to keep the lights on. Yeah. Um, share alike means that whatever you make out of my stuff, you have to share it with the same level of licensing that I gave. To mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. And then non-derivative means you can't change anything at all. That's bad. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, so if you think from the perspective of an author, like if you, if you create something, you automatically own the copyright unless you have a faculty contract that says mm -hmm. that if it was on college time, then the college owns the copyright. Mm -hmm. But anyway, whoever the copyright holder is, they retain their copyright. Um, they're just yeah, adding an open sense. license on top of the copyright. So your copyright does not go away. You're giving advanced permission for these certain uses. Mm -hmm. And it's a shortcut because if you find something that's under copyright, you can always just write to the author and say, "Hey, can I have permission to do X, Y, Z for my class?" Mm -hmm. And they might say yes, or they might never write back. <laughs> <laughs> or they might write back in six months when the quarter's already over, you know? Right. And say no. And let's see, do we have anything else that's like basics? Oh, yeah, there's also the public domain. Um, mm -hmm. Works before 1923. You don't even have to provide attribution. Also, the federal government, anything that's made by the federal government, is some states as well. Right. Not every state, which I learned yesterday. What, what does is made by the federal government? <laughs> well, like, um, yeah, so there was an Who is this government? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, how far does the government go? There was right. an instructor in here earlier who does um, industrial safety, and she uses OSHA materials. Mm -hmm. Public domain. So, how can there you is tell? There's some questionality about that, like with uh, uh, PubMed right now, it's everything that's right. got an NIH grant is supposed to be uh, accessible to the public, but publishers, especially Elsevier, is pushing back and saying, no, uh, we are not making this information available, um, and that's in court. Yeah, I mean, I knew that that was a thing, but like there's, so for biology, there's a lot of things Produced by government entities. Mm -hmm. Does that count? NIH or something? Right. Mm -hmm. Like if the NIH has produced a page about parts of the cell, is that in the public <coughs> domain or is that in the domain of not the public? <laughs> well, and like, will, will it be labeled as such? The NIH actually has a web page that has all of their stuff that's freely available. And they explain. Huh. Well, good for that. We'll have to go find that. NIH images. So I want to say that the answer is yes, but the, the fact that we're having this discussion is making me realize that like I haven't really dug into the NIH. I'm not totally sure. Heather, do you know NIH public domain? I, I don't. I don't know. But so I, it's, yeah. yeah, I mean, if, if any, I remember Cable Green talking about how this is one of the reasons to promote OER because you know there's all this taxpayer funded research through mm -hmm. NIH and other you know, federal governments, and then it's published in peer one or um, peer reviewed <laughs> journals, tier one journals, and you know that's great for the tenure of the faculty that are doing these research projects. But then, the research is not available to the the general taxpayers, um, and that's that's just right. doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make economic sense either. So, so that's okay. So maybe um, the reason maybe the reason that we're having that fight is because that's grant funded. It's federal dollars that go into grants, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to something that an agency directly creates. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, probably. Um, but you're making me realize that I need to look into this more. <laughs> so. but, but even their agencies might use stuff that is not theirs, that they've gotten permission to use, but oh, we point. would not have permission to use just because somebody said it was OK for the NIH. Mm -hmm. Excellent so, point. And, and so that's why, actually, you all are kind of a special case. Um, because you are getting these grants where one of the 
um, requirements is that you can share forward. Um, so you need to be confident that a downstream user can mm -hmm. do the five R's with your work. Right. Um, so when, when I gave this training as a webinar um, to the grant cohort, somebody said, well, can I quote from copyright material? Mm -hmm. And which is such a great question. Yeah, well, so then I did some research. So I talked to Rachel Bridgewater at PCC and I talked to Nancy Sims at the University of Minnesota. They're my copyright like go-to friends. Um, and the short answer is yes, you can. That's like what scholarship is. Like we build on each other's work. Mm -hmm. uh, but the longer answer is can you consider your downstream user? Is there some other way to convey the information besides using a direct quote? Like, can you summarize with attribution? Um, or is it really important to have the person's exact words? Um, is it, um, you know, is it definitely fair use? Are you feeling risk averse? If a downstream user had to not use that copyright piece that you used, um, would they still be able to make use of your work without it? Um, so this is again on the handout that I sent out by email and I can resend that link, but um, it to me it, it was a really really interesting conversation to have and it kind of helped me understand more of like That relationship between fair use and open licensing but When you're quoting copyrighted work for an educational purpose, is it, isn't there like a link limitation uh, for what you're allowed to no, uh, no, there's no hard and fast rule. People say okay. like one chapter or 10%, but that's actually not a up. thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there's just like, like to make that 15 up. minutes for a whole professor and 20 minutes for a... Yeah, <laughs> they are awesome. totally <laughs> just making it up because they're risk averse and there's no hard and fast rules with that's copyright awesome. law. And you know, there might be a situation where like it's a poem that's five lines long. You have to use a hundred percent of it in order to right. you know only one thing about it. You know the so, first line, that's all you get of that poem. I know, right? Yeah, so yeah, there's just yeah. so many things that are yeah. kind of like these weird customs that are not based in the law. Okay. Yeah. So I have a very closely related yeah. question yeah. about data. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to take data from some source like presumably a paper, mm -hmm. can you quote it? Like, what would you do if you're actually extracting data from something? Can you copyright data? I don't know, that's the question. I think you can take the data and make your own chart. I mean, or, or if you're used, if that sounds to me like the perfect opening to have some kind of assignment where your students have to go get the data and do something with it themselves. Right, well what I would want is to give them the data and have them do something. And so then I could always say, here's where the data lives, go get it. Mm. But then but you have then to maintain they have that to link. Have, yeah. yeah, they have to have the link and we have to have the internet mm -hmm. and they all have to have smartphones. And so like being able to provide the data means that you Small can skip stuff. that step. So I would say like, can you use data from the government? Because that's definitely public domain, right? Probably not. I mean, no. for biology, like, unless we're looking at are all publicly funded data sets going to be from the government, but I don't think that the government does a lot of mm. biology, like, mm. research. research. Yeah, I guess what's the CDC pops into my mind, but... Right, and so for not, very yeah. specific things, like if I needed public health data or epidemiology or something, I could probably find mm -hmm. that. But that is totally not what I would need for my courses. Right. I would need like basic biology kind of data that you would get out of a paper published by a lab. Really good question. Um, so perhaps one way to start would be to write to the author and say, hey, could I use your data for this purpose? My work is gonna have a CC BY license on it. And if they give you permission, you're totally in the clear. Um, or even before you do that, you could take the specific use case and run it by me or one of the Mount Hood librarians to see if you even need to ask permission. Um, this, is, this is an awesome question. And I have not been asked it before. Even in a for-profit scenario, if somebody has published data saying 84% of Americans are obese, you can <laughs> write that in your paper published somewhere else going, so-and-so found that 84% of Americans are obese as long as you 
Right, well, right, but it wouldn't be. I'm, I'm looking at something, like, not where I'm trying to restate one fact, but, like, here's that's the data. data that they gather on something. In a table. On something. Yeah. Here's their table. That's, that's yeah. the same Graph thing. Graph it. Yeah. I think it is. You think the it's the same? I don't know if it's the same, because, like, the example that points. Rachel gave the other day that I thought was really useful is, like, well, this isn't this is an open textbook. So, pretend that this was a copyright textbook. If I take one of the uh, charts from here, let me see if I can find a chart quickly. I know. Well, okay. So yeah, imagine that this is a chart. Imagine that this is a chart, and I take it, and I'm like, well, actually, I'm just going to put this in my open textbook, right? So that is totally not fair use because I'm completely undercutting the reason to buy this thing. Right. Um, so, and also, it's not just data, it's also the organization of the data. And the presentation. And, right, yeah. and the design of the data. Right, yeah. yeah. So maybe if you reformat it mm -hmm. and put it in your own thing. But I, let's think about this more, and, and I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you right off the top of my head, but it's such a good question. Um, and also, There is no answer, it's such a good question, there's no answer. There's a, yeah, so well, I'm so trying. the other thing is that if you find the specific data that you think you want to use, let's look at that specific use scenario. Um, and see what we can get to with the thing that you really have picked out that you want. Okay, well I yeah. had a specific example, which okay. is this paper that was retracted, which is about how GMOs give rats cancer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was all up in the news mm -hmm. for quite a while, and you still find it on like natural news websites. They cite it all the time. Uh, the author is Seralini, Serafini, something like that. That got republished in a Creative Commons or an open source journal. Oh, his actual paper? His paper got republished oh. in an open source journal, so I bet you could just cite it from there. Okay. Okay, so if we assume that that was not correct, <laughs> <laughs> you just fix your problem. For the purposes of <laughs> reflection, if I wanted to take his data and say, here's the data that they got, I would like you, my students, to make a graph of this selection of the data, because he got a whole bunch, and I don't want to give them all the data. Right. Here's your abridged data table. Mm -hmm. Make a graph and form conclusions. Is that a thing? That's specifically what I want to know if I can do. And obviously if it's in an open source <laughs> journal, then yay, problem solved. But if it was not, and it probably is because it was retracted and he still thinks he's awesome, so. And that's why he republished it. Right, he's report. putting it out there. Uh, but you know, the other thing about this is that just because it's out there for free, um, doesn't yeah. mean that it's openly licensed, right? Like anything that you find online for free is assumed to be under copyright unless you specifically see that Creative Commons license. Um, so you gotta sometimes hunt around for that. Yeah. I just love that the that picture is Creative Commons. I know. I searched Flickr with the Creative Commons thing on. <laughs> That's great. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. I love that question, and I'll, I'll ask um, my copyright friends. <laughs> Related to that, yes, journals that you don't have to pay to access. Like, uh, give me a journal there, because you're the one that knows all the things. Work. Right. Would it be better to try and pull stuff from there, or would it not make a difference because that's copyrighted under whatever their copyright is, which I don't know what their copyright know. is. Well, let's check. Let's find out. So, E-L-O-S-1. Can we say about? Why publish? Publishing information? Policy use? Content license? Do you think that's it? Yeah. Seems like a good place to start. Oh, CC by. Well, good to know. There we go. Problem solved. I will so you can only just use all of your data from this one. I love it. Data. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Glad that we looked at that. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> next question. <laughs> I would still like to know about data from non PLOS one journals. Especially because I had that weird kind of possibly non-fact that you can't copyright data, and I don't know if that's true or not, so I need to look into that. That would be not very helpful for me. Probably no one else, but for me. It would get, be good for me to know for the next person I ask. Yeah. Um, 
other questions about copyright and licensing or anything else? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have another question. Yeah. I will have all the questions. Yes, have them. <laughs> um, I might have a question. <laughs> no, only when I've done all the questions. Okay. <laughs> then I will let someone else have a question. Um, what format should I be putting this stuff together in or does it not matter? Oh, like right yes. now I have put all the things yeah. into Word documents mm -hmm. because that is the only way that I can handle it. <laughs> is that an okay way to deal with it? Yeah. Do you know how you're going to eventually share with students? No, nope, not excited? a clue. Yeah, so however you want to organize it for now and then uh, we need to talk about platform at some point. Yeah. Okay. That's something my team's trying to figure out too. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, that kind of goes along with my question, which is that ultimately,